So it does happen, and it does explain some of the the mind-boggling decisions they make. Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling. On children, uh, Family Cards, unfortunately, has been inverted, turned upside down, uh, due to Satanist infiltration. We are talking now about a system that is more likely to protect abusers than to protect children from abusers. A trainer of actors and an actor myself. Amnesty for pedophiles. Amnesty for pedophiles. Amnesty for pedophiles. And you're calling for an independent watchdog, but how would you keep that from being corrupted? Right, there is, of course, no 100% guarantee of keeping anybody, uh, any organization from being corrupted. Uh, those people are more likely than not to be safe people to appoint to such an independent watchdog. And I think that's a very important requirement because that would exclude a lot of the establishment types who are either involved in SRA or are turning a blind eye to it and wouldn't dare to expose it because then they'd be exposing a lot of their establishment colleagues. Right? Nothing happened at all. And yesterday I found out why. And um, this very nice person from the Leveson Inquiry basically told me that you and Patrick and the other bloggers that put up your posts and what have you are going to be the poster children for the censorship of the internet in this country for the same reason as the, you know, the Australian pranksters are the poster children for radio, right, broadcasting. And my mouth was hung open. <laughs> I went, do <"Duh." laughs> You know? And, uh, and I said, yeah, that's basically what's going to happen to you. And I said, so why are you telling me? He said, I'm giving you five minutes warning because I like you. <laughs> and that was it. Apparently, we'd met at a party once and I was nice. I am nice. That's the thing, you know? And then you end up with uh, as the elite scratching each other's back, as normally happens in these cases. Uh, so you have to have a minimum requirement of proven track record exposing SRA. Bill Maloney is just a disgusting individual. He is there working for <clears throat> these people to just discredit victims of abuse. Um, anybody who is a little bit that you know could could um what's the word i'm looking for anyone who knows stuff that they don't want to get out into the public anyone who's got bits of dirt you know skeletons in the closet he that's what him and his cronies are there to do to discredit them to make them look like nutters to make them look like they don't know what they're talking about so that the truth is just seen as crazy shit that someone's going, you know, it's just... It's been so... Oh, look, oh, look, Sheila Smith has got my little icon, so... And, and despite that, we've done this all on the backdrop of this horrendous campaign of disruption and, and discord. It's just been absolutely unbelievable. And there was even, like I mentioned earlier, some woman had put um, a, a, some video out. I mean, the woman looked like a witch, and I'm not here to knock anyone, but, and she's saying, oh, what John's doing is similar to what Jimmy Savile did. I mean, oh my God, I mean, <laughs> could scream, but this is how divide and conquer works. This is exactly <laughs> how it works. And do you know what? I'm not listening to it. I'm ignoring it. It ain't nothing to do with me. And I know in my heart I've done good and I'll continue to do good. And uh, all those victims and survivors out there, I'm doing it for you. Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it. And I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through. Let's see the physical injuries that they endure, the fear in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not even going near the satanic stuff. Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling, but let's see. Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. And I'm doing it for all the whistleblowers that are waiting to do something. Um, uh, 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 uh. I've been persecuted, I'm doing it for you. I don't care about these um, ex-celebrities, what they say, I'm really not bothered. 
blown over and nobody believes it that's the, that's what they're there to do and John Wedger if he if he's in you know he insists on being Bill Maloney's friend and all the rest then he's part of it too and that all ties in because Brian Harvey trusted Brian Harvey thought, to begin with, it was Brian Harvey that offered to help Bill Maloney um, interview Andrew Ash. Because Brian thought that he was a good guy, Brian thought that he had good intentions and he was there to out all these people. When in reality, he's not there to out all these people. He's not that he's there to make you look like a crazy a crazy person so that nobody will believe you. He's working for them. And he did the same thing in the Hampstead case. So then, so what happened? Ellen sent the email to Brian Gerrish. Brian Gerrish sends the email to Bill at PlyonMaxfield.com. Bill Maloney. Brian Gerrish sent it to, yeah, I'm just thinking. Bill Maloney sent it to Nathan Numnut Wedger. Okay, a police informant. Mm -hmm. Nathan. Speaking out against it, doing all the hard work to fight SRA. Well, change of topic, uh, a very serious one. We learnt um, last night, in fact, that Wilfred Wong, the uh, child protection campaigner and a man who's particularly been working extremely hard over many years to protect children from ritualistic abuse, um, has been arrested as part of a group. And according to the mainstream press, <clears throat> they kidnapped a child at knife point. Next question, does researching this for over 20 years turn Wilfred's mind and send him insane, especially watching videos of child abuse photographs? Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through. Let's see the physical injuries that they endure, the fear in their eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not even going near the satanic stuff. We're all normal. <laughs> you know that that sign that they used to sell. It does, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, the the effect that this will have is is different for different people, and my calling and my gifting has been on child protection issues, not just SRA, but other child protection issues as well. And so I've been suited for this issue. Um, as a Christian, I would say God gave me this job. On. And it is as we've always thought that world politics, the national media the, and the alternative media to a degree is being controlled by paedophilia versus blackmail. Jesus. And Bill, what do, just to closing, what do you, I, I'll phone you straight after the show in about 20 minutes. Uh, I would also suggest for anyone working on these issues to, to ask themselves, as I have mentioned in various interviews, that if you think it's traumatic to look at videos or to read reports of abused children, can you imagine what it's like for the child himself or herself? Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it. And I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through. Let's see the physical injuries that they endure, the fear in their eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not even going near the satanic stuff 
let's let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling, but let's see. Let's let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through. Let's see the physical injuries that they endure, the fear in their eyes. Yeah, yeah. And let's let's play a trial of our police on the M1. Um, and uh, the mirror here reporting with a picture of um, Wilfred Wong. He's the only person that the mirror produces uh, an image for. And if you, sh if you see the full image, um, you see that uh, he's manacled and in chains. Now, I don't quite understand why he should be the only person to star in the mirror report, but I find it... Uh, I find it um, slightly sinister that they've chosen this particular image for Wilfred Wong. I mean, that looks very much like sort of US style uh, prisoner transfer. And uh, I wasn't aware that in the UK we used manacles in that way. Well, uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. I mean, maybe it's a doctored, um, a doctored image, but for, for the people that know Wilfred Wong, you look at that photo and it certainly looks like him, although presumably it's been taken from a distance, very gr grainy. Uh, because... Hello, mate. How are you doing? You left your number via Twitter. Ah! Guidance! <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I'm going by at the moment, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, cool, brother. Cool, cool. You know what? I just spoke to uh, Mark, you know? You know Mark? Um, Abraham's friend. No, I don't really know him, no. You don't know Mark? All right, then, listen. Abraham, I've got Abraham's number. Yeah. yeah. Abraham wants me to do an interview with him. I mean, obviously, um, through Mark, who's a friend of his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing that um, a certain person is missing in Spain. Right. Okay. Alright. Um. Yeah. I, I, I spoke to Abraham last week, and um, I might be doing. I don't know if he wants to do Skype. I know he said that um, he doesn't do Facebook and all that crap. You know what I'm dealing with? Right, look, look, look. The truth. The point is, is this. And you, you know, I interviewed um, Brian, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I interviewed Brian Harvey. Yeah. Listen, That's these devilish names keep coming up all the time. Widger, Maloney, and that Brian Gerrish. Yeah. Right? I'm looking for more information on these men. Right? What I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to do a bit of study on this damn um, Hampstead case, my friend. How this thing actually went down. How these guys were intertwined in it. Who screwed Abraham over for when? I need the information. I'm going to hear from him. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from two different people to make sure that I'm not being fed bullshit. You get me? Because I believe, from my mate Mark, I believe Abraham's innocent. And I believe the mother's innocent. Only based on my brethren Mark, who knows him. You get me? Yeah, and how long have you known Mark yeah. for? I've known Mark for a few years. I've known Mark for a few years and he disappeared. Yeah. And he disappeared for a while and then he turns up. He, 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 listen, he's the one doing Abraham's number on his phone and I talked to Abraham. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to Abraham. I, could, uh, I mean. Yeah, I've I never had his phone number, number before. You want to look on WhatsApp and get his number and tell you what Abraham's number is? Yeah, I've never had his yeah. phone number before. Huh. All right, he's right, always right, phoned right. me. Right. I've given him my number, but he's never given oh, me his right, number. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was the one that told me about you. He said, yeah, guys, guys, two, 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 cold, two, two, two. And I'm like, I'm writing his thing down and I'm sort of like, yeah, you know what I mean? And I just, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on these bastards. Alright? Now watch. This is, I want to go watch my Now listen, right? Hang on to my number, because I'm actually going to go over the road and see Mark now, over the cat. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and I need... I need to know, because you know roughly what the story... Look, 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 let me put it this way. I need to hear the story from you, right? I might ask some questions. You're going to see, and I'm going to be doing an interview with this guy in the next two weeks because I'm going up to Wales tomorrow to help someone with an extension. Mm. So I'm going to be backwards and forwards, you get me? Okay. Yeah? So maybe the week after, and I didn't really want to go this week because it's, it's really getting heated now with Brian and this weather and this... Yeah, and yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. But I did not really mm. want to be leaving this guy right now, but I've got a commitment. I've got to go and do it, you know what I mean? So the way I see it is this. All I 
what I'm saying is, we're going to have to sit down, right, or on the phone, right, or we can Skype each other, because I just don't want to, well, mind you, if you don't want to see your face, I'm not bothered, you know what I mean? You know, no problem, we can talk on the phone, but you know why I mean, I'm an under now, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we can, we can talk on the phone, when my phone's got enough charge on it, because it's on 2% and bloody thing goes in 10 minutes. Okay. Right, and, um, and, and I need to just get a feel where Maloney fits into this, if you know, right, where, um, where you fits into this, right, and, and, and most importantly is what, where this damn guy, this Gerish fits into it, because, I, what's his name told me that he met that Gerish on a silver, some sort of silver market or something like that, right. out in the city, okay. he met in there, you know what I mean, that's what he's telling me, you know what I mean, so, I just run a little chat with him and talk like, we'll just get a rough idea, you know, I just think this whole thing may be linked up. Yeah, well, it will be. Right? Yeah. Where was Millie Dyla's death and what really happened there? That yeah, girl was being prostituted. Look yeah, at Levi yeah. Belfield's companies. Yeah, that JP yeah. Cole. All no, them no, fucking I companies. I need to tell you about Levi. Levi Be I don't know if you know this. I only want to tell you stuff you don't know because you know so much. Levi <laughs> Belfield was associated with Joanne Solis's husband, Graham something, right? And Joanne and Solis... Know, they went up to see. No, Joanne Solis was the right-hand person of Gordon Bowden. That's right, that's what I said. And Eddie's yeah. okay when you see Joanne Solis. But Eddie discovered she was dodgy. He's the one that told me. I trust him as well. Well, How it's can okay. that man tell me on the day of the court, right, on the day of the court with Puddick, oh, you know, like, I think someone was in my house last night, I put a computer under the kicker board and I they took they it. Were. Oh, fuck off. Then you had Red Pill Phil talking about we're not going to stand for the judge. Hang on a minute, mate. This ain't your fucking court case. And then when I... I've got you on video saying it, so what are you fucking playing at? And then when I bring it up, they're all talking like I threw them under the bus. I didn't throw you under the bus. I said what I fucking saw. Who do you think you are coming into my fucking court case and deciding not to stand for the judge? That Who's that going to fare badly on? Me. Who's standing there in the fucking dock? But it's like everybody's. I know what you're saying, but I, I and I was live streaming, not live streaming, but I was covering that whole day of your court case, right? And people came out, and they would still come out for you, no problem. So, but everybody's got their own agenda, right? So I, I trust Eddie. Uh, I do. I and he told me in great detail. There's something. Said, there's something I'll tell you about him off camera. All right. Well, we'll talk about that. And he might be an agent. But the truth yeah. is, he told me when he dropped everything and came to help you, his flat got turned over. Listen, I want to believe that, yeah, because I actually like the guy. I liked him. I yeah, thought I if, he, if he was genuine, if that was Eddie, when he come round, Harry, if that was him on a genuine one, right? Yeah, I and think so, then, but I might uh, be wrong. No, you, I can't believe anything I've seen. Listen, they know, neither can I, neither can I. Story. Listen, Ange, they created a front page story for my benefit that Puddick funded that actually went on the fucking front page of not only the Express. But then, the other part just me, this and you've got to watch this thing, you've got to watch this interview. When I watched the girl, I put up on my Facebook page, listen, this kid's telling the truth. Yeah. Definitely. Right? Just the girl. I didn't look at anybody else. I didn't look at the mother. I didn't look at the father. I didn't look at this guy Abraham or whatever his name is called. Yeah, I just remember Abraham. You know, yeah, yeah. Abraham, I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right? I didn't look at anything. Else. I just looked at that girl and I said that kid's telling the truth. Right? But it's so it's so much footage to cover and madness. I'm like, bloody hell! Why can I do all and interview this brother straight away? Maybe I need a heads up first. Maybe I need. To... Well. I tried to do a couple of videos to explain it. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. And, and exactly, you know what I mean? The testimony that was said, right? There's a few things, and, and who exactly said? Um, Richard, well, well, Richard comes in and says it's dodgy. No, it's dodgy straight away, just Richard comes in. You know what I mean? Elisa and Gabriel, the Hampstead two. Like, it, it's, it, it's just... Right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people did. But they had a heads up. They had a yeah, heads up. From I'm hearing Wedges coming, right? And I only found that through a blog the other day, but that was it. I'm Hampton Hoax, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was shocked when the name Nathan came up. I looked and my eyes are opened up because Andrew Ash is saying in one of the videos with um, Brian, right? Yeah, and Nathan was there. He's talking about an interview he's having in the old building station and he's talking about this person, Nathan. Yeah. And I'm thinking, flipping out, yeah, that's what they're saying, it's Jonathan. It's him! So the bastard did what 
guys have room in coaching him, right? Mm -hmm. We know he's guilty. Look, we just don't get out on the bloody video. Like, I mean, yeah, John, you're a good man. We know you're a good man. Ah, we're just saying all that just to see, just to make him look even worse when he doesn't answer back. We know he wasn't going to call. Hello? Well, if, if you can hear me, I'll try dialing back. Um, I can't hear anything. Hello? Oh, I can hear you. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, it's uh, Skype always has these uh, problems I've found. So, but once it settles out, um, we're fine. So, you can hear me? Yep, absolutely. Oh, oh good, good, good. Um, by Leeds City Council and yeah. he, he was flabbergasted by the whole situation I mean it's, it's obviously um, since you tried to help me that time things have expanded since now um, when I see that the UK column is quite prepared to print unsubstantiated rubbish with the Holly Gregg situation but yeah. yet myself can come along with substantiated allegations and yeah. back that up to a point where I am willing to go to prison over it, then serious questions have to be asked because when I then um, am helping... Well, let, me answer that. let me answer those because mm. this, is, this is an important part of where, you know, the, 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 the reality gets created into something quite different. The, I'll tell you the, the problem with the UK column. Right. Uh, let, let me stop you one second though. It's, right, what on. I will say is it's not just me. I'm just highlighting something that I can demonstrate, but sorry, go on. Okay, that's fine. I mean, obviously... The UK column, what happens with the UK column is they are so overloaded that they are not dealing with things as well as they, they, they could do if they had more help. That's, I've been down there, I've spent a week down there, and, and it's just impossible to, to do a lot of things. That's the first thing. Mm. Secondly, secondly, I'm absolutely certain that there, there is no problem with doing your story. It's just that there were there were things that were happening that that were being overflown that that their commitment. So so you know I can't I, I, I can't I can't buy that. I'll tell you why I can't buy that because well, this, let's, this let's, is let's, this, let's, this has been going on for a couple of years, Roger. And to be honest with you, it's not just like we're not just talking about December of last year. We're talking this has been ongoing, and I've been filled full of excuses to the brim. Like for instance, um, deadlines have not been met. One of the things is that I will make you aware of is is um, there's a direct connection to, of common purpose to Brian Gerrish, and and that's fact. Um, I have approached a, a young lady who I um, was staying with earlier this year. I went to stay with Eleanor Wilson um, in London. Uh, for, um, I stayed for a brief period of time in in uh, December, and then it was float a door, perhaps you need a break, come and chill out with us and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> Eleanor Wilson is, um, is a common purpose graduate, it turns out, and uh, I have um, put this to her and stated that any silence on the matter is acquiescence of what I am saying um, and given her the opportunity to rebut it and, and uh, it's actually, she's actually listed on the Common Purpose Expo's website. Now, um, this all links in um, uh, can I just ask, is that, I think I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, she, she, uh, she comes across is she the, melt she the partner of Michael um, S um, Stone? Michael Upstone. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Yeah. It, it, um, okay, I know, I, know who you, I know who you mean, because I've, I've actually had meetings with them as well. Yes, and now I went to, to stay with these that, people. That doesn't make me common purpose, of course. No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, the, people could say the same about me, staying with them. This is, this is the whole point, and this is why I'm just priming you on it, because, um, you know, the whole point is... Uh, Mike Upstone is, has been... Um, he claims he was in the army as an officer, and I... <laughs> do you know, you sort of ask these questions as you're sort of spending plenty of time with people casually. Oh, how, how did you leave the army? And then he came out yeah. with the old broken leg story. And I thought, yeah, right. Um, and so I said, well, which, which part of the army were you in? He was in um, the officer. He was in the officer's thing, and he was trained at Sandhurst, uh, by yeah. all accounts. 
um, from his own words. And then I look deeper at, at um, the organisation he's been involved with, and that's Humanitad. And Humanitad are currently um, trying to raise money to build a monument at the minute, and uh, that monument is a pyramid. Um, so then you start scratching deeper, and it all sort of links... I won't really go into it all, because I don't want to bore you, and I want to stay focused and not digress too well, much. Well, no, because I, I, know, I know a lot of the details already, and, and it's interesting just comparing notes, because I, I, I knew about the pyramid, I knew about Humanitan, I knew about Sanders, mm. I knew about Eleanor Wilson, so everything you're saying is, is lies there, because I spent, I spent about four hours with them and, and was able to sort of get a little bit of, of information and and let, let me just say this Chris I mean, yeah. you, you're you know you do what I do which is you, you talk to people and, and treat them as, as as you should just as yeah individuals you know, because you, you get good and bad in everything so you know you have to approach it that but way Eleanor was a bit of a bit of a, um, a strange box as far as I was concerned and and I don't know how you make the link with with Brian and Eleanor well, um, Brian made the link, would you believe? Um, when he, he's sending me text messages, um, as he was last week, um, yeah. he, he, he actually made the connection. And um, what I will say is, is um, um, he's placed himself in a position um, where, to be honest with you, no matter what anybody says to me, and that includes yourself, I cannot be convinced that Brian Gerrish is, is, is operating with anything but an ulterior motive. Um, because I've seen too much and I've seen a pattern of his behaviour. Now, um, it, it, the only way that I can reverse that position, in my mind, is, is if the man um, addresses the points and totally reverses his position and um, renounces um, any uh, connection to um, the club. I'll just call it the club now. Um, and, and if you speak to him, he'll know exactly what... Um, um, you are saying, even though it might not mean anything to you at this stage, and that's all I'll say on that. But um, the well, the, can I just clarify? Do, do you mean the Com Club? Is it, the what? Sorry, club? what club? Well, this this is the thing. There's there's an actual physical place uh, that is a club, and rituals go on there. Um, because I've been there when the rituals have been going on there, and um, in in, in where in the club. It, it, Brian knows. Brian knows. What in Leeds? No, 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 no. He, Brian knows. It, 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 you know, just tell, just tell him. You know that it, it's the club that his London team operate. Because that's how he told me. He told me it was his London team. Right. You see, this is where it gets interesting now, doesn't it? Because I, honestly, Roger, you you have been you've been self man, honestly. You you are, and and you need. Right. Uh, okay, um, I mean, I. I I would I would suggest that if there's information that you're um, you're imparting here that that is true and and it turns out to be not what I I I think it is then um, fine and that that's the way of the world. You know, but I know some things. Things and if Reggie's there and Maloney's living here, I know some things. Things. Yeah, well Maloney's uh, there, but he's he's not really there. He's working in the background. <laughs> yeah, well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the anywhere close. Right. Alright, then, um, listen, um, from, uh, yeah, yeah, call me later on, Bob, you know, when, like, when the sun goes down, you know? Alright, Eddie. And, and, oh, man can't work anymore outside, that's when I know I'm indoors and I'm just chill. I mean, my phone will be charged by then. I'll try, I'll try, we'll talk again yeah. sometime, innit? Yeah, yeah, and, um, you know what, and, um, just recommend me some videos on your channel that you have. You know what I mean? Just saving me running around town, watching everything under the sun, you know what I mean? I need to get this thing into sort of like a lockdown mode. I know there's a lot to it. Don't get me wrong. But like I said, sometimes it's, it's, it, 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 it's this, this whole thing, even this thing with Brian, is resurrecting this thing again, even though it's resurrected. Do you get me? Well, yeah. exactly. I mean, I took a break. I had to take a break. There was too much info, you know, too much uh, negativity and all that, too many agents. I just needed a break, mate. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, well, I know the agents won't even come onto my site, brother. You know what I mean? And I'm hearing it. Well, that, there'd be a few of them around, around, mate. They, they, once you've got, you got, you got a little group going, they're, they're always around. Yeah, what's his name? What's that group name again? Hoax. 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 Yeah, Hoax, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a group, you know what I mean? And mum's like, me, yeah, that's them people there. But, you know what I mean? It, well, I cannot say probably, you know what I mean? Listen, I'm going to try.
far do what we're doing anyway. Uh, I would also suggest for anyone working on these issues to, to ask themselves, as I have mentioned in various interviews, that if you think it's traumatic to look at videos or to read reports of abused children, can you imagine what it's like for the child himself or herself? Mm. Start with that. Don't start with your reaction. Start with the child's reaction. Can you imagine what it's like for the child himself or herself? Mm. Start with that. Don't start with your reaction. Start with the child's reaction to the abuse and the torture. Let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it. And I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through. Let's see the physical injuries that they endure, the fear in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not even going near the satanic stuff. Because you are just seeing it secondhand. What is it like for the victim firsthand? And dwell on that. And that would be a great motivation to fight SRA. That would be a great motivation to share the message about SRA's reality with all your friends and contacts. Because we always got to come back to that. We always got to come back to the child. Has been arrested as part of a group and according to the mainstream press, <clears throat> they kidnapped a child at knife point. Um, eventually the, the car that they were in was stopped by a number of uh, police cars full of armed police on the M1. Um, and uh, the mirror here reporting with a picture of um, Wilfred Wong. He's the only person that the mirror produces uh, an image for. And if you, sh if you see the full image, um, you see that uh, he's manacled and in chains. Now, I don't quite understand why he should be the only person to star in the mirror report, but I find it, uh, I find it um, slightly sinister that they've chosen this particular image for Wilfred Wong. Uh, I mean, that looks very much like sort of US style uh, prisoner transfer. And uh, I wasn't aware that in the UK we used manacles in that way. Well, uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. I mean, maybe it's a doctored, um, a doctored image, but for, for the people that know Wilfred Wong, you look at that photo and it certainly looks like him, although presumably it's been taken from a distance, very gr grainy. Uh, because you can look at SRA survivors now, and yes, what they went through was horrific, but let's remember there are a lot of children now going through all that across the country in our own backyard. I remember once going to an SRA location where a 14 year old girl had been sacrificed. Mm. It was only about 20 minutes walk from where I lived. <sighs> so I'm not kidding when I say it can be in your own backyard. In the mirror report, but I find it, uh, I find it, um, slightly sinister that they've chosen this particular image for Wilfred Wong. Uh, I mean, that looks very much like sort of US style uh, prisoner transfer. And uh, I wasn't aware that in the UK we used manacles in that way. Well, uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. I mean, maybe it's a doctored, um, a doctored image, but for, for the people that know Wilfred Wong, you look at that photo and it certainly looks like him, although presumably it's been taken from a distance, very gr grainy. Uh, number of reports coming out. I couldn't find anything on the BBC, interestingly enough, but local papers, because the start of the story's uh, up in North Wales in Anglesey. So here's uh, the North Wales Chronicle, Anglesey Knife Point Child Abduction, six people in custody. And the other awful thing was that there was a police station only about 50 yards from there. It is a lot closer than you realize. And we need to start with the child suffering and look at what we can do. We all can do something to help stop that suffering. We can all, when we expose SRA, when we tell people about the reality, when we raise awareness, when we write letters, when we campaign, when we, when we talk to our MPs about it, we are doing something to protect children from these unimaginable horrors. But case you mentioned, 
did they catch the people? The 14, who murdered the 14 year old girl, did they catch the, the people? Unfortunately, no. Mm. And it shows the boldness of this coven and possible police shielding of them that they were willing to do it in the basement of a building that was just 50 yards from a police station. A grave. In fact, sometimes the police park their vehicles in front of that building. But I haven't given up on monitoring that place and will continue to do so because I've on many occasions gone out at night to several of these places. As I said, when I do investigations, I like to do them with a very hands-on approach and not just speak as someone from a distance, but get close to the subject and see the actual places they use for these abusers. And uh, that gives me also an understanding of how they think and how they try to conceal their actions. Because the start of the stories uh, up in North Wales in Anglesey. So here's uh, the North Wales Chronicle, Anglesey Knife Point Child Abduction, six people in custody. But we all can do something and we all should do something. Plus they're insane in here, we're all normal. <laughs> you know that, that sign that they used to sell, it does, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Um, <laughs> No, but seriously, the, the effect that this will have is, is different for different people. And my calling and my gifting has been on child protection issues, not just SRA, but other child protection issues as well. And so I've been suited for this issue. Um, as a Christian, I would say God gave me this job to work on child protection anyway. <laughs> A source in America from the State Department and the CIA have confirmed that payments were made to a group in Libya uh, that was associated with Osama bin Laden. No, your inalienable rights come from God, and no one can force you to contract into the laws of England or the laws of Britain. You only have one allegiance, and that is to God and his chosen one. And I am, of course, that chosen one. I am the Lord Jesus Christ, and I now welcome you to the end times. Intel Pro stands for Counterintelligence Program. Now is Brian Gersh, UK column journalist and former lieutenant commander in the Royal Navy. Brian, good to see you again. What does Putin have to do with the Falklands? Well, that's a very good question. I think uh, what this is really to do with is what uh, the British uh, press and media think he has to do with. Um, uh, this is when it uh, appeared in the Express, so we got into mainstream media, uh, which was really cool, which was, which was great. Uh, that happened uh, at the Olympics as well, but they replaced me with an actor. <laughs> so, you know, some white actor they put in a hat and thing and said he was the undercover guy. Uh, but he was saying basically what I, what I had said. So, um, so to be actually on the front of uh, the Express newspaper is actually a really good thing. And, uh, you know, them acknowledging my existence and what have you. So, uh, uh, that's um, uh, me and my wife, Julia. And this is the letter that the Cabinet Office sent to Patrick Hennings. Uh, the 21st Century Wire. Um, nothing was sent to me. This was just sent to him. And it basically says that the comments are defamatory, uh, blah, blah, blah. It was mistaken identity, as Ian said earlier. You know, maybe he didn't understand it was. Ian Greer stood there in his office and said, Ben Fellows, well, Ben Worrell, Ken Clark. <laughs> right? Because Worrell was my stage name. Oh, 
Someone says Kenneth Clark MP. Hey, it's not mistaken identity. That's who you get introduced to. Unless there's two, right? I'll give you that. If there's two Kenneth Clark MPs, then maybe, maybe, you know, I doubt it. So, uh, so that's the letter they sent, and they said, We're going to sue you if you don't pull this down. And I said, Well, you know what, Patrick? That's a request. Don't do anything. And uh, I published the letter, um, which they didn't like, but that's what I do. I don't keep secrets, I publish things, right? So uh, if you come to attack me, then. Um, I'll, I'll tell the world about it, you know? So um, the, uh, the police came over to see me once I, I'd said this. And what happened was basically, I was in uh, uh, Ian Greer. Ian Greer was uh, a political lobbyist. I was in his office. Kenneth Clark was in there. I was there to deliver a letter to Ian Greer about a project we were working on the court report, basically saying our dodgy company was going to hire you, right? And pay him lots of money. So he was in, you know, so it was a good letter for him to get. Uh, Kenneth Clark was in the office. I was introduced to him. Why he was there, I have no idea. Maybe he was there to meet me, maybe not. Uh, while I was in that, I got groped by him. Now, I'm not going to go into too much more detail because I've given a, a statement to the police and there's an investigation going on, but broadly speaking, that's basically what happened. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but the police came to see me at my house. Uh, I didn't call them. They just rocked up. Uh, I did the uh, Express interview, and the police said, look, we want you, want you to tell us what you told the Express. I said, OK, fine, not a problem, you know. The press can't have the names that I mentioned and the police not. I mean, that would be ridiculous, right? So I said, so I told my story. I gave them all the names that I'd, 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 who had basically um, uh, been, uh, you know, inappropriate with me as a child actor because uh, I was saying it was the wider industry. And, of course, about Kenneth Clark, which they were already, they're only there for Kenneth Clark, really. They weren't interested in anyone else. They said, look, we suggest that you make a statement. And I said, why? And they said, because in six months' time, you won't be able to do it, and then it will be impossible for you to get out of the corner that you're now in. I went, well, I mean, I had agreed to make the statement already, right? So I didn't need to be cajoled or bullied or slightly talked to. And I was like, well, and, and now I know what he meant. He was, it was a warning. He was, it wasn't a threat or, or whatever. It was just, a, it wasn't any kind of pushing you in the direction. It was a warning. And the warning was that something was going to happen to the internet within the next six months, because they knew what was going to happen because of what the Levinson inquiry had already done and phone hacking, they could see that it was going to damage the police as well. All right, so, right, so, here we are. We've got a uh, hero of the day, Ben Fellows, um, incoming hero, Brian Harvey, lead singer of E17. Ex lead singer. How are you, Stan? I'm right, thank Good you. friend of mine, I'll give you a kiss in a minute, bro. I hope so. Well, it's I been deserve one. purely masculine, yeah. <laughs> now, Ben Fellows has just, um, Ben's just walked 300 miles from Plymouth mm -hmm. to London. Yeah. And now he's going into Parliament. He's, uh, as he says, he's storming Parliament and he's going to take up the position that Brian Hall was in. And you're going to put a, a tent where Brian Hall was, are you? No, uh, Brian Hall was on the green opposite the uh, Palace of Westminster. We're going to walk into the Palace of Westminster and get it on the green within the gates of the Palace of Westminster. So you've got uh, common people occupying the common land and they cannot uh, then uh, reconvene Parliament. It is illegal for them to do that. And that means we've stormed Parliament and then we've sacked the government from then on. That's why we love him. Sounds good. That's why we love him. And Brian, you come into the affray. Yep, I have. I, uh, what do I've... you think was going on? I'll be, let me just say, I'll be coming a little bit closer, baby. If you come in a little bit closer because of the mic, yeah? Um, now, I, I've spoke to you probably over the last month, probably about 12, 15 times. Yep, yep. And uh, you, you really amazed me, actually. And one, one thing I would like to say, all of you, look at, there's a, a documentary up, and it's called One Life. And it's about what happened to this guy. But now, he's still doing his music, but he's not beholden to the music industry anymore. He is now a free man, if you like. Yep, free man on the land, if you like. And what are you interested in now? <coughs> what do right you want now, to do, Brian? Right now, I just want to get involved in, you know, there's a lot of celebrities out there and no one seems to be coming forward and backing what's obviously 
the right thing to be doing. You're here about the, uh, the, the, the institutional, institutional child abuse. abuse. And, uh, mate, the information that I've heard over the past 10 years and what I was being told today on the drive on the way down, it is sickening. And why haven't more people come forward? It's disgusting. You need and, to and, but you're also interested in civil liberties as well. Civil liberties, the whole thing, yeah. mate. I'm That's a, what I'm I want to say, all more, three of us. People, I like to say, yeah, there's a lot of celebrities out there, right? And you're going to get fucked in the future because your little ride ain't going to go on forever. You know? Look, otherwise we'll use our powers going under the Reform Act to seize your items. Okay, okay. But You're not going to get that. violent with us, are you, officer? I'm not a violent person. Because I'm 58 years of age, a little bit older than you, I think. I'm not far behind you. And we've got an old girl there. How old are you, Brenda? She's 70 years of age, so Can I just don't ask? get too far. <laughs> hey, oh, we got a police officer with sense of humour, that's what we like. <laughs> Thank you. Is that right? I'm not getting involved or discussing. We are. But, excuse me, but you are involved. That's why you're here. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, Sergeant. Does, does that act supersede his human rights? The act that you mentioned, yeah. Acts of Parliament statutes who need the consent of the government. Does it supersede this gentleman's human rights? He, we're not telling him he cannot stay here. What we're saying is the tent. The structure, has to go. no structure. And and it's not a permanent structure though, is it, Sergeant? Have you read the section Illegal. 6? Yeah, we, we, we got our letter as well. We're going to give you a letter. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about Excuse that. Excuse me, why yeah. why have you come over? And Because you've got senior officers, we've got the police here. Is this Are you from the no. council? No. You're not from the... Uh, who are you? No, no. Um, where no, are you? Where you? Could you get this? Get yeah. this. We've known each other for a while, you know that. Yeah. Oh, I've met you before. We have up at Trafalgar Square. Yeah. We helped you out last time, remember? How'd you do? Brian, I'm out. Right, I'm out. So, no, mate. This guy's got a section six on his tent. This is where Brian Hall was. Now, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. does that, do you understand why he's here? Yeah, what is the next? What is I've the already next explained thing? that, sir. Well, well, I don't know. You haven't told me. Can I, can I know, please? Well, if I've already issued the direction. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the next step is yeah. to issue with a letter if you don't comply with direction. Right. Because it is an offence not to comply with an authorised officer's. Um, okay, direction. is that under a certain act? What is that? What's that's under is that the Police Reform and Social Responsibility Act. That's an act. So, so, so you're going to give us a letter? No, wait, wait, wait. I'm I not am going to issue. This is where you are at the moment. Yeah. So it incorporates all that area. Yeah. 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 So the Square. Uh, so hold the Parliament Square. Uh, right okay. behind the back of the Abbey. Yeah. 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 So that's down Westminster Bridge across. Okay. That's where it encompasses okay. really. Okay. So we can do it now. The well, I can't do it now because obviously I'm asking you to do it. So, um, so you can take the tent down, and that's the end of that issue. Okay. Well All right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarge. Thank you. Tent down. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, man. But I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. Brian Hall did it. I'm going to do it. Tent or no tent. And again. And again. This is not just about the press, but attack on the police. Scotland Yard's been sold off, by the way. Do we know that? Yeah? Scotland Yard's been sold to a private company. Right? The actual building. So, uh, so the police know what's going on. They know they're being attacked. It's, it's, a, it's a cold war that's going on, clearly. Um, and so... The police said, look, you're in a corner. And I went, what corner? I said, exactly, you don't even see it. But when it comes down on you, it'll be like a ton of bricks. So I said, OK, fine. Uh, um, but they wouldn't explain it to me. And they left just like that. And I thought, OK. And then another officer came and did the statement, and that was that. Um, and it was only until that phone call yesterday that I realised that they knew they were going to try and censor the internet. And because my story had appeared on the internet first, before it appeared anywhere else, um, uh, they were going to basically say to me, look, this guy um, is causing gossip on the internet. He's the reason why we have, and he's just trying to smear a cabinet minister, right? A senior cabinet minister. Probably one of the most senior cabinet ministers. Ken Clark has been there through everything, right? Um, and so had I not made a statement to the police, now with what's coming down with Levinson and that phone call yesterday, it, like they said, it would be too late to do it in the future because
and my house, my house, my mobile home is a complete junkyard. I would like to please, oh, excuse me, uh, uh, sleep a little bit flatter, yeah, like that. And I would really like to be able to cook in my house. So I'm going to ask you, please, to donate. Uh, I only need two thousand pounds, and then maybe I can have like a, a big mobile home. And I don't want to live in a house. I just want to have a mobile house so I can go and I can fulfill my dreams, which is to travel the world, to meet people, and make people smile, and bring joy to them because it brings joy to me. Thank you. As soon as they come out and say, "Oi, that's it, you're done," I, which Levinson did to the radio people, right? That blew up, and they didn't know what hit them. Right? They were in a corner, they didn't know it. Right? They put themselves in a corner because they did prank phone calls. Right? So, um, I was in a corner. And so basically, I was being warned. Do something about it. Now because I've made the allegations to the police, and the statement has been written, it exists. I'm now a protected witness. It is now an ongoing police investigation. Um, uh, and so, that brings us up to, to where we are today. Um, which is, it's still crackling on, we're still getting stories out there. We're uh, in the mainstream more and more now, which is really great. Um, it was a surprise to me that I was, found myself out of the mainstream and then I'm you know, finding myself and going back in in other ways and stuff. So um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, what I've had to say. Uh, I hope you find it useful and stuff like that. And uh, thanks for listening. And we'll... <laughs> Because you don't help people out that you're interviewed, you use them. You took that lad on the beach in Liverpool, and you've done a terrible interview with him, and he's pouring out his heart. What do you do for victims? I, I know Billy, and I know him well. Yeah, and you had a terrible interview. You've got no setup. You're only in for it for yourself. Oh, Why is it all about John Roger? Oh, Why is it all about your children? Is, how is this about me? Because you're oh, selling T-shirts oh, at your face, son, oh, and you're selling books oh, as well. How's oh, this about me? Because you're making money out of it. No, that's right. Yes, you are. Don't no, no, we are, mate. Come on. Really it's an old Done it again. I'm so sorry. Here we go. 
um, and I'm just here with her till that happens. Um, so I just wanted to, if you haven't had the chance to say thank you, because she sent a grant to you and to John as well. Wedger. I've let him know. Um, well, Sue's let him know for me. That's Sue um, If you want to send a thank you message to her, you may have already done it, Nick. I just didn't want it to be too late and you may not tell you what's happening, what's happening to her. Um, if you haven't had the chance, send me a little message on here, like write something out and I can read it out to her for you. She's, I know, um, I'm sorry, guys. She's going in and out of consciousness, but she, she comes round she's and she has like, little chats and then she goes back into being, uh, you know, unconscious. So... Mm -hmm. This was a bit of time left, so I myself. just wanted to make sure if you did want to do something, you could, mate, all right, because I'd hate for you to think, like, she's died and you didn't get to say thank you. Um, yeah, so if you want me to read something out to her from you, just text it over to me here, and I will do that, all right? And, um, uh, what else was I going to say? No, I'm fucking delirious. All right, well, I've got to get back in. I just popped out for a bit of fresh air. Um, oh, there was something, there was something, what was it? Oh God, I can't remember anyway. Um, all right, just take something over and I'll read it out to her and make sure she knows it's from you. All right, mate, see you later. Listen, brother, I think you're bang on, bruv, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm suspicious of him, okay? So, I kind of, um... I kind of uh, take account of the fact that I'm suspicious of him, so I allow him a bit of leeway. But that photo never looked right to me. Never, ever looked right, that photo. All right? Something didn't look right, yeah. And they've taken... Whoever's done the Photoshop has taken advantage of the fact that they've got the dark uniforms on. So that's a total mock-up photograph. He's very clever. Oh, he's, he's slippery. He's a Satanist. He's a slippery... Um, something... Sulfury. A friend told me that he's sulfury. He's a slippery, sulfury Satanist, that, that wedger. Don't trust anything he does. It's all snake work. All right, so you're bang on. I'm with you 100% on that one. And that video where he says, oh, let's... let's... Let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it. And I know it sounds appalling, but let's see. One, two, one, two. Come on. Yo, 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 yo. I'm not a loser. I don't want the booster. I don't want the booster. Yo, 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 yo. I'm not a loser. I don't want the booster. I don't want the booster. Yo, 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 yo. Don't take the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. Resist. Resist. Defy. Resist. Resist. Defy. Don't take the vaccine. Don't take the Children, children. Children. Yo, kids, kids. Don't take the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. Yo, young stars must rise us from the east side. East side, anchor, catch I run and get him feet tied. He cried, run government up for the seaside. We fight lock down, lock down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. tried, build on the rick, a lame man, mother than nigga. Show where the gun crime scene is. Cut out your liver. Show that to the dog on it, then I'm not ready now. Pierce, who the fuck is them fights up here? Ask it, chop up rock, my dirt in a basket. Watch it, boxing in the wanty. 16, me blasting. Now, here's make sure you send the chorus. Yo, mama, 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 don't take the vaccine, mama, papa, don't take the vaccine, mama, don't take the vaccine, 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 don't, children, 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 don't take the vaccine. You must be, you are true, you must be, you are 
a school. No kung fu, you big clown, you cartoon, you harpoon. We are foot soldiers, we walk it, we walk it. Foot soldiers, we nasty. Hey, the mass school is released to our school, the blast too. No vaccines around here, me not do. <laughs> Pfizer, Moderna, you too, you fool. My body, my temple, my choice, my rules. Here it's like some cool again, I say, ping off. But are these anti-vaxxers people of principle? To put this to the test, Archie and I offered Piers Corbin a dodgy donation of £10,000, told him I was an investor in AstraZeneca, and that we'd like him to leave AstraZeneca alone and focus his anti-vaccine work on Pfizer and Moderna. Focus on leaving AstraZeneca out of it wherever, wherever possible. We'll focus on Pfizer and Moderna. We started by using our brilliant PR firm, Gelden Yap, headed up by Harry Bridges. This is my business advisor. Hi there, Harry Bridges from Gelden Yap. Who emailed Mr. Corbin pretending to represent a wealthy individual with a connection to a vaccine company who wanted to make a donation. Now, in order to do this legally, because Piers Corbyn's not going to sign a consent form, we need to do this for real, which means for the first time ever in these videos, Josh is going to be called Josh Peters. And in order to say that he's got a shareholding in AstraZeneca, he really actually does need a shareholding in AstraZeneca. So I'm on this app now where you can buy stocks and shares in companies. So we're going to go for AZN. £82.13 pence for a share at the moment. Let's go with £100. Pounds How many shares does that get us? One share. It's done. Oh, brilliant. We are shareholders in AstraZeneca. Man in Britain finally arrived. Mr. Corbyn. Absolute pleasure to meet you. Me too. How are you? Well, I'm very Have well. a seat. Have a seat. It's lovely to see you. Been, uh, I've been seeing a lot of you lately all over different well, social medias right. and things. And that Trafalgar Square on Saturday was... That How? was amazing. I wasn't lucky enough to be there, but it looked, it looked unbelievable. Yeah. Would you like a pizza? While Archie offered pizza, I got ready to offer dough. My family business was restaurants, and then my father runs a very successful restaurant chain in South Africa. He actually started a fund in South Africa that I'm now a director of. So with his overseeing, I do some investments. One of our main interests, funnily enough, is actually we've got shareholdings in the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. <laughs> Can you believe that? You know, it's, it's not from a personal standpoint. It's more of a case of it's, it's good business. But uh, well, yeah. Of Piers didn't seem put off that I made money out of AstraZeneca but shared some wacky views on the other vaccines. Moderna and Pfizer give those magnetic things, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Well, that is very, very scary. I began to tease it a little. But, you know, if, if we can obviously help in any way to, to help your campaign, that's obviously going to help us. We, we've got shared interests. You clearly you. I mean, but, yeah, OK. No, absolutely. We actually even you know, brought along a little something today that was just a token of you know, our intention of helping out with your campaign. Oh, I was So if, yes. <laughs> yeah, and we, we yes, like um, to keep it off, oh, wow. off the book. <laughs> Showed him 10 grand in cash. But this is obviously just a sort of statement of intent. We'd love to keep that funding you. Um, so there's, there's 10,000 pounds there. Yeah, that's astounding, I mean. That, yeah, it's fun. That is brilliant. It's quite rare to have 10,000 pounds in, in silicon. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> to the whole, to the whole, you know, that's just... That's just a bit from the same. Remarkably, Piers was delighted with the money made from the vaccine company, but claimed he couldn't be influenced. Well, as long as I can accept it with, there's no uh, insistence on any policy changes or anything that I'm doing. But because we hadn't yet switched the money, we hadn't handed him the envelope. So we tested if he really couldn't be influenced. And I appreciate you're not, we obviously are not asking for a change of policy or anything, but if there is anything that can be done, to focus a bit on Pfizer and Moderna, that might be a that would be helpful for be us. A useful thing. So, knowing that I was an investor in AstraZeneca with a financial interest in other vaccines doing badly, Pierce Corbin started writing down benefits of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay, A Z not um, a, uh, a mRNA. Yeah. You know, just. Uh, it, 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 so which just, is a, which is a fact, but I... it is. I mean, you know, we're not saying change any policy, but. If, they could be slightly ignored more that would obviously be helpful yeah. for us and said yeah to our request for astrazeneca to be ignored have you connected sra and the intelligence community yes uh in fact for example just one example i'm also aware of uh at least one satanist in one of the uk intelligence services uh having a go at me for my part in the campaign on the Holly Gregg case. And I know she works for GCHQ. So that 
was also a pretty clear example. Belinda McKenzie lives in Highgate. People. Hello, do you want to say hello? Actually, you guys can say hello. Oh, you're the wrong way. <laughs> hey! Hi! Amazing turnout in London today. Yeah, it was fantastic. How many people are out here? It was amazing. So, Children First UK. I, I'm not going to put your face in it. Um, it's my attempt uh, to try and get a national movement going. Okay. Everybody who wants to stand up and take an action against child abuse and get together. No second name, just first name will do and an initial, and then email because I've had problems with social media, Facebook. In London, North London near the station, and what she does, for instance, is she let activists stay at her house, right? So these activists go and stay there, and then she basically gets find stuff out about them and basically make sure they never get anywhere. So, for instance, Jim Fetzer. Um, who's got a radio show, very interesting, had some excellent bits of internet radio off Jim Fetzer, especially Phil Jahan and Larry McWilliams, also some of Greg Hallett's early videos, not his later videos, like the ones back in 2010 or before, some excellent, excellent videos you get up there. Point is, um, uh, yeah, so what she'd do is he'd come over to stay and he she'd say, oh, I'll organise, get loads of people down to your talk. Get to, gets to London, flies all the way over from America. No one's at the talk apart from the people who he's got to film it. And she's like, oh, no, 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 the other activists, oh, they said they let me down. They let me down. Nick Collistrom often goes around there to do talks now. Nick's a bit dozy. He's a national treasury, probably a genius ten times over. But the whole point is he's got this blind spot and he's a bit stupid when it comes to certain things. Goes around to Belinda McKenzie's house, of course. If you do a talk around her her house it won't be recorded like any of his talks should be recorded he's a very very knowledgeable guy a national treasure as i said thing is what they'll do is they won't record it so then only like five five people will see it and five of them will be sort of like you know sectionable fucking you know basket cases and the other five of them will be my five agents and no one important is going to see it right so a lot of people were fooled by her and i don't know if they've taken in by it but you see another thing for instance she did was she had a firm called iran aid yeah uh, not a firm it was a charity and then she stole all the money out of the charity the charities commission investigated it referred it to the police said it was fraud police didn't do anything she stole i think 15 million pounds or something she just stole it so you see this is this is this is all obvious signs they're working for the government or they got government approval now i'm not going to say what budget they get paid out i don't know that i don't have to know everything about everything to call foul on something but i am calling foul on it it's highly suspicious um anyway right so you've got that one then you've got um current old post it can take diff different forms now, one of the things is as well, they'll yeah, slag people off and they'll sort of start rumours. Another thing what they do, especially with a lot of the, the, lot of the people who are very concerned about people getting stolen by children, stolen by social services, that they disappear off the radar. Um, there's a lot of concern about that in the country. And what they'll do, for instance, is they'll put something on the internet that's being subject to a gag order, um, you know, because the stuff that's been in the family court often get a gag, gets a gag order. And then the next thing they'll do is they'll is they'll start publishing something. Then other people will publish it, thinking, well, if they're the linchpin of it all, if they haven't got any trouble, I can, or I can repeat it. Next thing, that person will be getting in trouble for talking about something that's got a gag order on it. But they'll just allow that website to stay there with it published. You see, they do all sorts of stuff like this. It's all just dirty tricks, dirty tricks, and dirty tricks. It's the state setting up a pretend opposition against itself so it can be crushed at any time because the leaders are all co-opted. Now, the reason you can tell Brian Gerrish is coming to old pro is for two reasons, right? Now, I don't know if Brian's an evil guy or whatever, or he's just been paid to do his job by the government. He used to be in naval intelligence, so, you know, he's... he's, he's if he's, you know, like if you enable intelligence to start off with, and then someone thinks you might be doing something doing intelligence, I mean, it's, I don't think it's that hard to really guess. And he, he, he I think he's got a slightly checkered past. I think it's quite hard to find out things about his past. But the point is, is that um, he was obviously um, in the navy, 
Then he makes up some fairy story about what happened when he left the Navy because he makes out he was doing quite well financially. Now, I don't believe he was doing quite well because David Noakes, who used to own the UK column, who started it, says that he was completely on his ass and he didn't have any money. Now, he's making out he's like a successful businessman, but David Noakes thought he's completely on his ass, didn't have any money. Now, maybe, maybe he did have money and that was all part of the trick and he was doing that at the start, but that David Noakes said he used to actually have to give him some money to run the paper out of his own pocket. He was paying him just enough to sort of keep him floating by because he said he'd be very useful for it. Now, this is the thing, right? The reason, and this is this is the only thing you need to forget, don't be confused by anything else I've said, which maybe I shouldn't have said. Brian Gerrish was supporting commercial liens. Commercial liens have no precedent in this country. They've never been successfully used for anything. Brian knows this very well, and Brian was still saying, oh yeah, commercial liens, commercial liens. And also the guy called Mike, I forget his second name, who edits that UK column um, in inverted commas. Um, he was also banging on about these commercial liens and quite hilariously he said that this guy called Michael Dougherty was the one who put these commercial liens on. Michael Dougherty has got nothing to do with commercial liens, I can tell you that for now. And then you see other people turned up at, at, at something that he was doing in a court to do with um, issuing a summons for private prosecution. They thought he was putting on a commercial lien or something. So, you see, they're obviously telling people, oh, yeah, go down there. And these people think, oh, bloody hell, commercial liens, commercial liens, commercial liens. They've got no precedent. Mike and Brian say they have. Right, now, this is where it gets worse. They know full well they don't work. They know it well, well, well. They, 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 and they lie about sort of court hearings and stuff that have rolled around these um, apparent instruments of instruments of just bullshit it's just a load of bullshit they don't exist right now innocent then they picked the camera people up from they picked the camera people up first went over to amsterdam to get supplies and stuff and pick up and then them. you went to the isle of wine to, to pick up david Ike. as much as you can because we With are announcing Ike. this publicly big time today i'm on thank this is David Icke, another hero who uh, people you know, have tried to ridicule and put down. And uh, David, as far as I'm concerned, of all us abuse victims, he speaks for us. Well, it's really great to meet you. I've been pushing your video everywhere. I know you have. I know you have, David. Because you're doing a great job getting this stuff out. And, you know, it was... um. It hypnotised them. It hypnotised the kids physically. The kids are making them think. So, so I know, you know you see these hypnotists on these shows, and they give the people, but they don't know what they're saying. People need to pocket watch them, David. I can, can hip, he's learned the acts of hypnotising and hypnotising. I don't know if he's learned it from BBC and UK. You know, that's something they learned at BBC. Or oh, through the, you know, the masons, it's probably something his dad taught him, so I don't know. But he's got the knack. He can hypnotise an old crowd like a magician. And it can make you think anything because you're hypnotised. And what sort of thing, how did he use it? What did he use? Did he use it against he, kids? He, he used it on kids and he'd get the boys tapped girl things out and stuff like that. And yeah. And then, so the lad, when it was being filmed, could really enjoy what was being done to him. Yeah. And what was being done to him? When he was being bunkered by the rest of the... Males? The adults? Everyone, including, well, I would be, happened to me as well, I would put in trumps as well, because he just thought it was good that it was, he thought it was good and the other cameraman, the cameraman that was there and I was with him, so I just I had two cameras and I did hold the camera, mm. and I did take f footage and I'm ashamed of that, but I was trapped in that and I was 15 years old, and, yeah. and, and I didn't know any better at the time and stuff, but. I was also abused. I was being abused. Because and then you went to the Isle of Wight to pick up David Icke. And he got on that boat. And he was on that boat 100%. And there were disabled children on that boat going on holiday with Napier and his trust. Yeah. Okay? It's a big, massive, beautiful, old wooden cruise boat with great big masters. And, okay. and then we went to the Channel Islands. We went around the island of Sark and just spent a couple of days around there. Yeah, let's stick on David Icke. Any 
one's injustice is our injustice. That's the only way to bring an end to this. It's time to stand up. Stand up. Enough. Time to fly and have none of this crap any longer. We get it because we take it. Thank you very much. It's good, David. <laughs> You've done well there. Right. So um, now David, David has just given what I would call a very comprehensive and rousing speech to victims and to people that are, you know, a girl said today, I think it was um, the girl who was up there, what's her name, David? Minty. M Minty. She said, I want to see fighters here today, and that's what I was after, David, I wanted to see fighters. And that's what we love about you, David, because you're a fighter, and you don't stop. And it comes out passionately when you talk, and it comes out passionately within your work. And that is it. So we're looking to you, David, as well. Some people look to me and then I look to you. Everyone's got to have to look up to someone. And I thought that was a wonderful speech that you've done, David. So, um, what, what else? I mean, you know, when you're up there sometimes you think, it goes, doesn't it? You think, I wish I'd said this, I wish I'd done that. What do you wish you'd said that if you'd have had more time? Well, I can't think of anything now. What I would have done would have been more com comprehensive about it. Because yeah. once you realise that there is this secret society structure, this global structure, like a transnational corporation, yeah. um, it's like, um, you know, like a hologram. Every small part, small, smaller parts of the hologram are smaller versions of the whole hologram. Yeah. This is how this control system works. Yeah. So your, your, your Freemason, satanic, paedophile structure on the Isle of Wight or in your part of London will be the same as the global one. It'll just be a smaller version of it. That's how we've got to educate people, yeah. David. You know, it's like the Masons, and when you start talking about satanic abuse, they think, oh, what's this, what's this yeah. geezer? It's crackers. Yeah. I'm saying it now as yeah. well, and I do believe in satanic rituals yeah, they do, uh, yeah. and I think the island of Jersey was absolutely total re completely what else did you witness on the boat that, that was that sort of became almost ordinary um, to you because of the world that you was put into but to the public would shock you know what I mean so you know what things did you witness they get them doing uh, they get them doing all bizarre things and stuff like that like then um, what kind of bizarre things? We went off to Amsterdam to get supplies and stuff from pick And then you went to the Isle of Wight to pick up David Ike. And he got on that boat. And he was on that boat 100%. And then we decided to do I know, mate. Right? So what he says is that... <laughs> I know, right? He says he gets picked up from Amsterdam with filming equipment on Charles Napier's boat with the Azimuth Trust. They, right. they, cut that, they come over to the Isle of Wight and pick you up. You get on the boat, and then um, on the boat there's disabled kids and stuff, and you're having sex with one of the, one of the disabled kids, and also you, you supposedly have sex with Andrew in one of the cabins, right? Right. Where on that boat did you have sex with David Icke? Uh, down in down in one of the cabins down in the it big... gets worse roger hayes went on um this program that was actually aired on some kind of random uh very obscure sky channel and it's also you can listen to it again on the internet there was this company called um, edge tv or edge media tv and he went on that one year at christmas and he said Oh yes, if your children have been stolen from the, you by the state, you can put commercial liens on people. We have lots of success. Didn't say who you put the commercial liens and just said you just put them on people. Doesn't explain what the logic was. If What on earth would it have to do with your children? And if they've been taken off you by social services. Absolute bollocks, right? He knows it doesn't have any effect. Now, just before he said that, Brian had been asked. This is Brian Gerrish. He'd been asked. Uh, is there anything you can do if you've had your children stolen off you by your state for no good reason? By the state for no good reason. He said, no, absolutely no. If they want to take your children, they're just going to take them. There's no proper due process. The court system completely bent. They just take them. There won't even be any rationale. They're just shameless. Um, and then Roger sort of talks over him and said, yeah, put a commercial lien on them. And then he says, right, he says, contact our, our organisation and we'll put you into the right, touch with the right people now. When I know who, who the setup at his company at their little little free radio radio is right, so it's been financed by um, that Kitchener's great niece, I think, or maybe niece, but I think it's great niece. 
and she's uh, apparently she's extreme she's getting sort of seen old she's really racist right and she just like basically wants all the blacks to be killed <laughs> so they have to sort of keep her away from like you know a lot of their audience but she gives them all their money also i'm gonna look at the interview that me and sam are not an interview I'm gonna look at the video that uh has the skype call of me and sam when uh, he wanted to Skype me to explain things to me <clears throat> and uh, I tried to explain to him that I sent an email and he explained to me that he's so busy that he hasn't, he hasn't got time to reply to emails And but he managed to read the email he confirmed that uh, yeah but he hasn't got the time to reply to emails but he took the time out to give me a Skype call so you know looking back it just doesn't make sense that you was willing to give me a skype call but you couldn't email me and then when you're skyping me you just wanted to start from the beginning you didn't want to listen to what i had to say to clarify the email you wouldn't debate so yeah looking back you know if you ain't got time for the email why did you give me time for the skype call hello yeah can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm in the one uh, Android device. Let me Skype on the phone. Weird. Yeah. I can only just about hear you, but it's like muffled and shit. <laughs> well, to, to be honest with you, I'm not on the best setup. It's taking me a day to get it to work. I'm just on an Android pad. So I'm, I'm not really at my location. You're a bit of a scrub lord, so you only have like shit machinery. I'm a bit of a what? Scrub lord. I'm just like setting the boundaries, like by taking the piss out of you. As in, I'm like, I know, I know that like Tron exists. As in, we're not always like saying exactly what we mean, especially when we're like typing shit down. But um, I don't, I don't really want to talk to you too much. So you want to talk to me? I'm not going to be rude. Okay, I'm just going to answer the question you asked me about Brad Garrison. I'll explain if you want. If you really want the exp explanation, I will tell you. But you have to listen to it, okay? No problem, Will. Okay, here we go. So, I met Brian in 2013, like, in Bilderberg. But I didn't really meet Brian. Who I met was um, Lou Collins. And Lou Collins and I met because Lou Collins' boyfriend used to live in a flat with me in South Devon when I was about 17 years old, when I lived with my brother. So Lou Collins, when I met Lou Collins, because I'm from the Southwest as well, and she's from the Southwest, they're all from the Southwest. That is the connection with me and the UK Collins, that we're all from the Southwest. Sam, the blogger. I'm actually more excited today about my next guest. I met my next guest in 2013, in June. Uh, I'm previous to that, I'd seen a video of him uh, on YouTube, uh, where he visited the Grove prior to the famous Bilderberg meeting in Watford. And um, we've been friends ever since. Uh, his name is Sam, the blogger. Most people have known him, S. Williamson's on uh, YouTube. And when I spoke to him last night because I'm a bit worried are people actually going to know who I am he's on the line right now um, so let's bring him in now hello 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 you good morning all right how are you, you I think you summed up perfectly just how confusing I am <laughs> general <fortune. laughs> somebody who knows me very well still doesn't know the name of my YouTube channel I know sorry so come on for, for the benefit of the listeners what's the correct Sam Williams -ism 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 -ism. S S William ism I S M on the end it's a really bad yeah but there we go can we not change it to Sam the blogger because that is what you are known by I mean, you coined Sam the blogger try to build a bug. so I went along to the Royal Courts of Injustice, sorry, the Royal Courts of Justice to attend the most recent case. And when I arrived, I bumped into one of the chief campaigners, Belinda McKenzie, and I asked her what on earth was going on. Right, well but luckily, as I left, I managed to bump into Brian Gerrish, the man who started the UK column newspaper, and uh, I asked him to clarify. So, Brian. 
Tell us what happened in there today. Well, it's stay away from Wikipedia. Well, Wikipedia can be useful, but I've just had a joke with you a little bit earlier on today. Um, if you want a big joke, go and see what Wikipedia says about me. Okay, Brian, thank you very much. So, Brian Gerrish there. Into waiting rooms. Now, of course, in that these things work on facial analysis... The idea of transferring them to facial recognition literally is like a software upgrade. So, can we, can we, can we can make that question number two if you want? Okay, so I'll ask, I'll ask you a question. What's Luke Collins doing now? Because I know the answer. See if you know. What are you doing now? Yeah, what are you doing now? You, you tell me, you know. She's working, she's got an office job for a magazine in South Devon to look after her children, and she has turned her back on UK Column. She talks to UK Column as much as I talk to UK Column. Because they're not going to be exposed. Never speak to them. Okay, then, Chris, never speak to them. Okay, then, Chris, let me give you the news I forgot to tell you. So I'm into computer, and I'm into camera equipment and sound and music and all that yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Would, it, would, it, would, it, would you feel what I was less of a shill if I got my guitar out and played some bark to you and got and like... Got or you can be that Linda's friend and play Sheepo. Sheepo the Sheep, sheep, ho. sheep, ho the sheep song, song, yeah? yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, so, right, no, wait. Brian Gerrish, I've met him multiple times. I, I first encountered him when he was like, just in the line of the first lawful rebellion stuff I started to get into. And I used to like really respect the guy. He absolutely hates my guts now. And it makes me think that, I mean, he's gone through a schism. Like when I first met them, they were going through like a populist bubble. And they had a guy called Malcolm Massey. And they were just for, like a cool... Um, albeit, you know, a bit southwest culty, Glastonbury, attached to hippie people, you know, that sort of thing. What well, makes your one not random and my one random? Bobby. Well, I have been uh, labelled a shill. Huh. I have been labelled a shill. Okay, okay be because of uh, shill. something that I got involved my... with. Will you listen to me a second, please? Yeah, okay. Let me finish. No problem, you're Will. Saying, you're saying that the, re the reason that you sort of accuse me of being a shill is because you're saying there's something I'm putting into my videos which is trying to like manipulate people's behaviour and make them believe something that's not, which is simply not true. Well, if, if you think that my videos are shit and if you think that what I'm saying is wrong, then that's fair enough. You, you don't really don't have to watch I, I explained really to you, didn't I? Shill, a guy who went to art college <laughs> and uh, I'm really good at painting and I'm really good at sculpture yeah. and I'm good at mechanics, like I'm good with cars and I'm an amazing driver. It doesn't mean anything good. to it this conversation, you're, you're just okay. like playing with words now, you like hearing your own sure. voice, uh, Sam, like yeah? Uh, you know, you want me to listen to you, but sure. all you keep repeating is about this art thing that you've done and the education you got and it doesn't mean nothing to me, okay? I'm talking to you about Brian Gerrish, the UK column, Lou Collins and the bit of info that you've just given me, you know, it, it proves your link. Yeah, it's, it's more definite now than when I was just uh, sending you the messages via YouTube. You know, and you've confirmed it with your own mouth. Yeah, because this is how it works, isn't it? They all live in each other's house. You know, do you know Belinda McKenzie? Yeah, I don't trust Melinda McKenzie with a barge pole. No, why is that? I know, I have lots of stuff about that. I, I cannot tell you. <laughs> I really cannot tell you. It's like, what's going on with, with those guys? I, that's the thing about UK Column, I've always stiff. And what else, can't you, what, what else can't you tell people? Because it's not just me you're not telling, it's all your subscribers, isn't it? All this information you got that you can't tell no one. You know, you're sounding more and more like a gatekeeper, aren't you? You have huh? no idea. I gave you, no. I gave you a message, right? The first time I gave you a message, yeah, I sent you a message about uh, when you were saying about the Queen and the Mayor and all that, and I said to you, oh, I saw the Mayor on the, the, the 10th, okay, and then you done a video about the number 10, okay, and then when I done this uh, message to you about the, the link that I gave you, Buckingham Palace, the United Nations, the Royal Car with Charles, and that was meant it's to be not, paint bombs, you, not, you, right. you went to Buckingham Palace, right, and I you stood, I and hang on, hang on, look, you, you, I, I let you talk, didn't I? I go there every day. I let you talk, didn't I? What? You know, you, you're not letting me finish uh, what I need to say. I think, mean, you know, did you start saying this the first time I stood at Buckingham Palace? Because I've been standing in front of Buckingham Palace for fucking years. And, uh, you know, I wish I knew that Hampstead thing before, because I would ask you about that, Sam. 
your Hampstead involvement with Lou Collins? So, Louise, I know that uh, you've had a look at the area and you found yeah. that at least uh, some of the information that came out of the children uh, yeah. rang true. I had nightmares over this after seeing some of this in, um, back last year, um, but I decided I was going to go. I was going to go up to Hampstead and just check out the locations that the kids, the children, were saying and whereabouts they were. And uh, Sam, the blogger, accompanied me. And whereabouts they were. And uh, Sam, the blogger, accompanied me. sure that you're not talking about certain subjects that's just my opinion um anyway look after yourselves stay blessed so anyway but the thing is so roger hayes is even worse because i mean listen there's one thing having having a little bit of a laugh having a little bit of a laugh with uh you know just people who are just diddling around and they're like in their middle age and you know, midlife crisis they just want to do things to rebel because they didn't do it when they're younger but when people's children have been taken off them for rightly or for wrongly and i think often it might be rightly or it might be wrongly you shouldn't be you you, you know you can't go around saying do a commercial lean no don't go to court and put a witness put a commercial lean in threaten them say they owe you a million pounds it's, like fucking, it's the most fucking stupid thing ever but the point is because Brian's good at telling the truth about lots of things and then just lying about one thing, it can kind of trick you because you think, well, why would he lie about that? Everything else has been 100% reliable. <laughs> and it's complete rubbish. He had me for a while because I thought, but it didn't ever quite gel in my head. It didn't quite make sense. But I thought, what is he up to? What? I, and eventually I realised. So, but I know this for a fact now. This is a fact. It's never been used. And he says it has. And he even talks about court cases and stuff, which never happened. So, um, I also have it on good authority that there was a circular sent round in the courts, and I think I've actually seen it, saying he must not be allowed at any court cases as a Mackenzie's friend. Because what he does, yeah, if you're a Mackenzie's friend, you're not allowed to talk. You're, you're, you're allowed to whisper, maybe, in the person. You're not really meant to talk at all. You are not allowed to address the judge. You are not allowed to start arguments with the judge. You're not allowed to do any of that stuff. Uh, you're not allowed to cross-examine the judge. <laughs> you're not meant to cross-examine the other parties. And the other thing is, if you have a couple and children at stake, both of them have a solicitor, right? Because sometimes they might think that they're on the same sort of side, but obviously they might have slightly different interests. So, like, let's say one of them wasn't going to be allowed to see the kids. Maybe the other one would. So... You know, you sort of they've got a slightly different interest in these types of cases. And he was apparently like, you know, just that, just, but you see, the whole point is that if you go into the family court cases, the law has slightly changed now because you're just not allowed to say the names of the people, but you're allowed to say what happened, I believe, sometimes. But the whole point is they're, they're subject to gag orders. So what was happening is people go into these court cases 
he was making a complete hash of them because what he was doing is he was getting to the pre agree and say, look, if they won't accept me as your Mackenzie's friend, we all just walk out. So people can have their kids taken off them, probably anyway, go into the court case, walking out. The court case goes on without them being there. I mean, it's funny because it's so absolutely outrageous. That's what he was doing. And then they'll say, but, but you've completely fucked us over. You fucked the whole thing up. And he'll go, oh, you're not allowed to say anything. Go to prison. <laughs> so, you know, he's completely, completely off the wall, like bad behavior. Like, like you will not, will, you will not believe. So I don't know what he was playing out there. I mean, I think he does like arguing. <laughs> he does just do it for, you know, divilment. But at the same time, I do think he's working for the, he's working for someone else. I don't know. And lots of the things in his past don't make sense. Like, I'm from Medway. Um, Medway's what they now annoyingly call Gillingham and Chatham and Rochester and stuff. They don't call them their respective names. They call it Medway, right? Um, he's from, I think, Chatham or Gillingham. No, he's from Chatham, right? And one time I said to him, oh, yeah, because he put it in a video. He said, oh, I'm from Chatham. Now, I remember lots of, because well, I'm from there, I remembered it. And I said, oh, yeah, you're from Chatham. And he was like, oh, how do you know that? How do you know that? And it's like, yeah. Like, why, why was he so, you know, he, 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 there's, some, there's, some, there's some secret there. And I don't know because I, I just said it to him because I didn't know whether it was true or not. I go, yeah, 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 I know about you and the Kent Messenger and the Freemasons. And he was like, oh, how, how do you know? And I was like, I don't know anything about it. I just said it. So somebody said that there's some kind of history there. So I think he's probably a Freemason. And I, I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but lots of things that Brian said, like he'd be probably come across like he'd be anti-Freemason, like he'd think they were a subversive force, but I think he is actually one. Um, Roger Hayes obviously got a Freemason haircut, um, you know, the bits around the side. <laughs> and, you know, but I don't know if he's a Freemason or not. He's a very pompous, pompous idiot, that's for sure. But I don't know, definitely. So you've got... Belinda McKenzie, definitely working for the government, and not a good part of the government. Not everyone who works for my five is bad, are they, probably? But, um, you know, if you're working against the public, she, you know, that is that is bad. And um, Brian Gerrish and Roger Hayes. Um, Roger Hayes actually done an amusing video about me with this guy called Chris Jarvis. Now, Chris Jarvis, to say he's a nobody, would be um, a sort of an understatement. This Chris Jarvis um, is very two-faced. Was when I did this radio interview about Brian Gerrish and explaining how I knew he was co Intel Pro and not to be trusted disinformation agent, I um there was this woman called Melanie Melanie Spencer or something, and then there was this guy called Chris Jarvis who was like helping her interview me, and this guy kept cutting in over the top of me. Now they've done a superb editing effort because you can't actually see that on this video. But um that she, she did, I think it was I forget what it was even called this show, but anyway. Then he's gone on to Roger Hayes and he's phoned him up and he's recorded the call. Now at the start, Roger goes, "Now, Chris, you're not you're not recording this, are you, Chris?" He goes, "No, no, Roger, I'm not recording it." And oh, he's got this really fucking weird Northern accent. I can hardly understand what he's talking about. And then, <laughs> and then he goes and puts it up on the internet, and it's like almost an hour in total because there was two parts of it. And basically, about twenty minutes into the first, um, you know, episode. They just start slagging me off, calling me all sorts of names. It's absolutely hilarious the way they're talking. It's really, really funny because they're just really, really angry and they haven't actually identified anything. They don't. They're just going, he's a twat. He's a total twat. <laughs> they're just going, they're not actually saying why. It's very funny. I'd recommend it. It's, it's, you look at it on YouTube, you get Roger Hayes conversation 7 September 2012. In parentheses, part one, end of parentheses, and that's on Chris Jarvis's channel, and that's J A R V I S. As I said, it's at like 20 minutes, 20 minutes in, 21 minutes in, and they just start unloading all this negativity about me, but they, they don't really explain why they've been so negative. It doesn't last for very long, but it's good, it's good like three minutes. I'm just kind of swearing, just too normal, it's just getting very, 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 very angry. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll, Whenever I want to laugh, I just have a like, little listen to it. So I'd recommend that one. All right, any questions or any more information about this? I, I, I'm not really having any interest in these people anymore. I've exposed them. People still want to believe, not, not listen to the obvious. You know, like you should say, look, he's lying about that. He knows he's lying. It's not like he's passing on false information by accident. He knows it's lies and he's still doing it. You know, that's, that's his credibility gone. They're like, no, 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 he does lots of good work. It's like, well, you're an idiot then. You know, he's lying to you. Hey, you still believe him. He's been caught out lying. He can't even just explain himself. 
he won't explain himself. You know what I mean? If you're stupid enough to continue to listen to him, then that's your own problem. All right, thanks a lot. I've been Tom Carhill. Uh, let me know if you've got any anything interesting about it. But as I said, I'm, I'm not going to get into... I, I, can't, I can't really be bothered getting It's quite a depressing subject, you know. But it's something interesting, interesting. You know, you spend a lot of time dealing with something at one stage. You know, in the future, you'd have a little bit of a debrief. You know, you sometimes want to go back to it, you know. Anyway, thanks very much. Bye. When, when I need help, I, I, I just go to the weaker, to, to those of you that are weaker, and, and, the, and the flashbacks and the horrors you have, and, you know, I, I'm not going to go into them, in, 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 because you can look at all the work and you can see when I'm talking about what kind of sexual abuse, to what extremes it goes to, and then the psychological abuse um, with the, 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 um, the sexual abuse, and that brings us into Stockholm Syndrome, and Stockholm Syndrome is um, when the victim believes that the perpetrator is a friend. Blocks. James and we, the, you know, all these films have been telling us what's going on. What is wrong with them? Are they are literally high on drugs? But, but this is what I said to you the other day. I said, let us get one of these films, these snuff films, there's a woman from Ireland said she was there when she watched Ted Heath kill a kid, right? Betty, that's you know, been lost. Right, right yeah, well, <laughs> so <laughs> let, let's get these so. videos mm. when, oh, they, yeah. when, when they cut this other woman also said they, they um, gaffer taped So oh. let, let's play that video Right, and you tell us that we're lying. You tell yeah, us, exactly. you tell us that Jeanette's a liar, and let's get all the commissioners of police and sit them down and say, if you don't do something about this, we will do the same to you. You know, you're as this is enough's enough. We we we. See, we've got to wake I think up from this. being a mom that when I had my first son, like, let's let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling, but let's see the reality of what these young children have to go through mm. let's see the physical injuries that they endure the fear in their eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not even going near the satanic stuff no. and then the snuff movies <clears throat> and i'll tell you what there wouldn't be one decent individual left wing right wing or indifferent that wouldn't want hanging brought back no. the next day you know i've been the videos and they've made me i've had, I've had to Turn them off, John. They were so yep. disgusting. Yeah, but, but I mean, I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, what... them up there. about paedophilia, about adrenalochrome. Um, the, we'll put the links in below, but you can do your own research on this. It's not a very, very nice situation, what's going on. And maybe there's a reason that it's not out there, but it's, it's something that you can look into personally as to what is actually going on. Yeah. And where was the first underground built? It's in London. People, let's, let's play a child porn video one day. Let's play it, and I know it sounds appalling. Listen, brother, I think you're bang on, bruv, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm suspicious of him, okay? So, I kind of, um, I kind of uh, take account of the fact that I'm suspicious of him, so I allow him a bit of leeway. But that photo never looked right to me. Never, ever looked right, that photo. All right? Something didn't look right, yeah. And they've taken... Whoever's done the Photoshop has taken advantage of the fact that they've got the dark uniforms on. So that's a total mock-up photograph. He's very clever. Oh, he's, he's slippery. He's a Satanist. He's a slippery... Um, something... Sulfury. A friend told me that he's sulfury. He's a slippery, sulfury Satanist, that, that wedger. Don't trust anything he does. It's all snake work. All right, so you're bang on. I'm with you 100% on that one. And that video where he says, oh, let's...